Hey there, welcome to this webinar. I'm glad you popped on to gather this very important information. I'm going to try to keep it brief, but it's really going to be informative. So um, I just want to introduce myself. I am Diane Costo, the founder and CEO of Symmetry Neuropathway Training. I was formerly with BrainCore USA. You may have heard me associated with that. Um, make sure you have some paper and pencil to jot down a few ideas and thoughts throughout this webinar because I'm sure you're going to have some things that we would like to discuss together privately after you watch it. But basically what I'm going to do throughout this presentation is go through a little bit of the what, why, and how on what symmetry neuropathway training is and neurofeedback. And I like to start that out with who. Who am I? Why am I doing this? Many of you know my story with my son. Some of you do not. Um, but basically, it was a very ugly roller coaster ride for many years of looking for answers. Um, he was very impulsive to the point that it really got him in trouble everywhere he went. He didn't fall in the typical ADHD category, and I didn't believe in ADHD. However, um, anywhere he went, I'd really get a call. We really love him. He's not following the program. You need to come and get him. So I tried. Uh, private school, homeschool, boarding school, homeschool, military academy, to no avail. Very long and aggravating story taken short here for this presentation, and he ended up in a school for troubled teens. Same thing was happening there, though. Within a few months, I got a call from the CEO and founder there, and he's like, really love him. He's a genius, but he's not following the program. And we were really out of options. I had sat in rooms full of people just shaking their head because he didn't fall into a normal category. But there was something, a disconnect between uh, you know, stimulus and response, basically. He didn't have that pause. So at the time that I got the call from the boarding school, I ran into, I actually was introduced to a founder of a neurofeedback company. And he said, that's the kind of kid we can help. I was not familiar with neurofeedback. No one had mentioned it to me all of these years. They mentioned medication. And sadly, I did medicate him at one point. And um, due to the sad side effects, we took him off quickly. Wasn't the answer anyways. So I went through this training and I took this neurofeedback system from South Carolina to the middle of nowhere, Utah, where my son found himself at the school. And I began implementing neurofeedback for my son. And within a few weeks, it totally made a difference. I started to see him slowing down between reacting to taking that pause that he never had. I saw him resting better. I saw him becoming more self-confident. And at the time, the other parents were totally interested as well. They said, bring it on. You know, we're spending more money than we have having our kids enrolled here. We don't like the medications. We don't know what else to do either. Bring it on. And we had so much success with that program that it was life-changing, not just for me and my family and my son, but for others. And it, it directed my whole path since that to be on the mission. I'm still a mom on a mission. It was to help him all of those years and to take care of my other son along the way. But I'm still on a mission to share this. So I'm glad you're joining us today to gather this information. It could be life-changing for someone you know or someone in your own family. So this is my little guy when he finally got out of all of those different programs. <laughs> he's much older now, but he's my uh, anonymous poster child, thus the APC. So this was a while back. Um, and the silver linings also. My older son rode that roller coaster ride with us and ended up in um, Boston at the uh, Berkeley College of Music, which is well, a lot of people ask me, why am I up in Massachusetts as well as South Carolina? And that's why. It was our family story and our roller coaster ride. But you and I can chat about that another time. Let's get into the nuts and bolts here. Some of you have heard of neurofeedback but aren't quite sure what it is. So what is neurofeedback? Neurofeedback's a method of training brainwaves to alter the structure and the function of the brain. And that seems pretty extreme, the structure and the function of the brain. But really, um, that happens every time we learn. It changes on the levels of the synapses you'll see in a moment. Another name for neurofeedback is EEG biofeedback, and it works by training the brain to function at its maximum potential. It's strength training for the brain, basically. It's a simple learning modality using technology, though. It's painless, drugless, and non-invasive. It's considered safe and effective for children and adults. 
So neuroplasticity, that structure and function change in the brain, it happens all the time. At the beginning of life, when the immature brain's organizing itself, it happens in the case of brain injury, when a brain is compensating for the lost functions. And throughout adulthood, anytime we learn something, neuroplasticity happens at the level of the synapses. Physical changes happen in the gray and white matter of the brain at the small, tiny levels of the connections between neurons. It's basically permanent. When we learn how to ride a bike, we may not be on that bike for about 20 years, but when we hop on it, we still kind of know how to do it. And when you practice something repeatedly, you form a pathway in your brain, in your memory to do that task. So studies also with neurofeedback show that it has lasting changes. And there have been studies. There are over 50 years of clinical research proving the efficacy of neurofeedback in many different situations. Let's look at a few of those. These are some common labels that you hear. I don't like to use the labels, but you know what the associated symptoms and struggles are when people have focus and attention issues, stress-related disorders, autism. There's a lot of different things out there um, that there are neurofeedback studies on to reduce the symptoms. And here are some more. Headaches, again, stress disorders. Um, so you may wonder, really, how can it, one thing affect so many different conditions and symptoms? And neurofeedback is based on the principle that many of these are results of brainwave dysregulation. Often, these types of things are just managed with medication. Look at the list here. You see depression, fibromyalgia, ADHD, bedwetting, migraines, tension headaches, learning disorders, always usually managed by medications. So right now when you look at this, now you understand the common factor is the brain and brainwave dysregulation can be a big part in these things. Stop and think about what you've invested in medications and managing those medications and going back to the doctor's visits or seeing specialists for different programs that haven't really gotten you or your family member where you want to be. Jot those numbers down. So again, how can one modality affect so many different conditions? It's not snake oil. It's not a magic pill or a quick fix. It does take time. Remember, it's a learning modality. And the common factor is our brain and our brainwave patterns. They've done tons of research now on the brain over these years. We have a database full of maps and research showing what the proper patterns are in a brain and what improper patterns are. And we can teach the brain to change. So let's get to the next phase of the program here. Let's talk about the why and a little bit about the how. So why does this work on so many different conditions? I like to touch on the research and how this was found. Barry Sturman found neurofeedback back in the 60s. He was a uh, sleep researcher and he accidentally stumbled upon this while doing a sleep study with cats. And his work eventually led to the discovery of a neurofeedback protocol that is still used today to treat grand mal seizures and epileptics. I'm gonna try to zip through this because I don't wanna bore you too much. But basically, I find it fascinating and I think it's important so that you understand that this is not just a placebo effect, that it physically changes the structure and function of a brain. And the reason is they found um, that they could actually teach cats how to produce a specific brainwave at will. While Barry Sturman was watching the brainwave activity in these cats in this study, they did a few different phases of the experiments. Of course, press the lever to get the milk and broth and kind of watch what happens. Then they introduced a tone and the cat had to wait until the tone shut off before it would press the lever to get the reward. And they found that when the cats were waiting in that still focused alert state, waiting for that tone to go off before they'd press their lever and get their reward, they discovered a new brainwave. They kept repeating that and teaching the cats how to produce that brainwave more and more. They even took the lever out of the picture and they rewarded the cat when they produced that still focused alert brainwave. Every half second burst of that brainwave activity, that one particular component band that they discovered, and they'd give the cat milk and broth. So those cats learned to produce that brainwave more and more. They wanted the milk and broth. <laughs> they wanted the reward. So um, that was a fascinating study, and they learned that they could teach other animals to do the same thing through a similar process, measuring the brainwave activity, giving them a reward when they produce a certain 
component band. Okay, so now Barry Sturman was commissioned by NASA to figure out why the NASA, <laughs> my Southern accent coming out there. Anyways, he was commissioned to figure out why the astronauts were developing seizures when exposed to rocket fuel. Now pay attention. 50 cats were brought in. This time they weren't so fortunate they were injected with hydrazine rocket fuel rather than given the milk and broth. But only 40 out of the 50 started developing the seizures. And they were like, what's going on with these other 10? What's different with these cats? Well, they figured out those were the cats that were taught to produce that specific brainwave at will. Those cats actually strengthened their brains. They altered the structure and the function of their brains by increasing that particular brainwave. They were resistant to seizures when exposed to a toxin. I think that's huge. I found that astounding. <laughs> so that's when it all began. When they saw that the cats were resistant to seizures, of course, they replicated the studies and then they tested on humans to see if they could teach human beings to produce that same brainwave at will. And they actually published a study in the Journal of Epilepsy, and I think it was in the 70s. Um, they were able to reduce grand mal seizures by 70% in epileptics by teaching them the same thing they taught those cats. That's how neurofeedback started, and it was then it continued to be studied in all of these universities that you see here. Technology was cumbersome. It was expensive. It's still not inexpensive, <laughs> but it's uh, more accessible these days. And here's a quote from Frank H. Duffy. He's a professor and pediatric neurologist at Harvard Medical School. He actually states that neurofeedback should play a major therapeutic role in many difficult areas. In my opinion, if any medication had demonstrated such a wide spectrum of efficacy, it'd be universally accepted and widely used. Seems like the medications get accepted quicker than science like this. However, even the American Academy of Pediatrics a few years ago did include EEG biofeedback, which is another name for neurofeedback, as number one best level support for attention and hyperactivity. So we're catching on a little bit. And again, neurofeedback is based on the principle there is a normal pattern of brainwave activity, and the brain regulates itself based on that pattern. Research demonstrates that that pattern can become disrupted and could cause neurological symptoms. There are different reasons these patterns can become disrupted. You may be wondering, okay, I know a family member that has this, and I know a family member that has that, but what happened? Why would, there, why would they have that? Why did my son have the lack of impulse control, that disconnect? Could be variations in his brain structure genetically, could have been developmental interruptions. Some people, when exposed to different drugs, prescriptions, and toxins, at different ages respond differently. You've heard of vaccination issues for some children. Poor nutrition. You know, our diets and nutrition, our food isn't full of nutrients that it used to be full of. Um, trauma, stress, those kinds of things can actually change your brainwave patterns. So now we're getting to the final part. Hang in here with me. This is interesting. So how does symmetry neuropathway training actually work? Once we identify the patterns in the brain that are off, then what? First of all, we identify it with a QEG brain map. We actually measure those brainwave patterns. We compare that to the database and the research out there, and we get a detailed report on what is going on in that individual's brain. Based on those findings, and those findings are not to diagnose any conditions, they're used to determine effective protocols, neurofeedback protocols, things to teach the brain to overcome the negative patterns. Again, the goal of neurofeedback is not to cure, to diagnose a condition. It's rather to teach the brain how to better regulate itself. This is what happens. Number one, the sensors are placed on the scalp and ears to read the brain's electrical activity when they come in for a neurofeedback session. The brain waves are then displayed on the trainer's computer and certain goals are set. What are we going to encourage? What are we going to discourage in the brainwave activity? That's set in the computer software. Then the individual is watching the screen, and when the brainwave activity meets the goals, they get positive feedback, just like the cat did, except for people. It may be seeing the screen brighter and louder and a better resolution while they're watching their movie, and then it'll go dimmer and quieter when they're not meeting the pattern that we're trying to encourage. Well, it's between the brain and the technology. The brain will figure out what it has to produce to see that screen in a better resolution, just like the cat's brain's 
were able to produce the specific frequency in order to get their milk and broth. And this, is, this happens very passively. There's not a lot of effort or strain. It's relax, kick back, let your brain do the work. So it's a lot different than a lot of different modalities out there. There's no pressure. It's painless. There's no medication involved. It's non-invasive. We're not forcing these patterns. We're teaching the brain to change through operant conditioning. So the state-of-the-art software, again, it will automatically detect when the brain waves are properly ordered, gives that information back to the trainee during the session. Because when you have information on what your brain waves are doing, your brain can actually use that information to change how it works. The goal is not to diagnose or treat any particular condition or disorder. It's to transform an unhealthy, dysregulated brainwave pattern into a normal, healthy, organized pattern to promote positive changes in the brain. Usually, people will come in for about 40 to 50 sessions of training. We know that it takes at least 20 to create permanent change in the neural pathways, so about 20 hours of neurofeedback. It's ideal for someone to come in two to three times a week. Sessions last about 45 minutes long. We do a little bit of other things in our offices, but that's the general amount of time. And most people will see some significant changes around 15 sessions or so. Back to the investments <laughs> that you've already made trying to find answers. Boy, I know what I spent on my son, and I did not have the resources to do it as a single mom, putting him in all those different schools wasn't like I was a trust fund child, but what do you do? I had to do something for him. Um, so we invest a lot of money in a lot of different programs looking for answers. And I'm sure if you're on here and you've hung in this long to gather this information, you may have done that already. Or maybe you're smart enough to get the, you know, something taken care of before you get to the point that I did. So um, doctor's visits, co-pays on medications that constantly have to be managed and changed throughout a lifetime insurance plans, um, all different kinds of therapies and appointments, and stress, tension. You know, our family was very much disrupted through all of this. How do you put a price on that? If someone would have told me I could spend what I found out I could on neurofeedback, um, I would have done it in a heartbeat. So neurofeedback training, you're investing some time it's permanent long-term change in the brain. It's a fraction of the cost of managing traditional therapies throughout a lifetime. And there are no harmful side effects. We calm the nervous system, which can create some emotional changes and sometimes fatigue. It's like going to the gym. Other than that, um, you're good to go, which is a lot different than medications. So consider that as you were jotting down some of the different things that you did, because when you and I have a conversation, we can discuss this a little further. Uh, but I want you to understand the investment versus the expense. So I put in a few testimonials here. You may want to pause this webinar at this time and read them, and we could send you a few more. But we've had some really... Um, Fabulous support. I've seen a lot of lives change over the last eight or nine years, not only my own sons, but many others. And it's just very rewarding. I'm glad that you have stayed on here to gather this information. I'm sure you must have a family member or yourself or someone that you know that could benefit from this information. So um, you're welcome to share that with them. And also go ahead and uh, click on the button or link below and schedule a time for us to chat. Let's get a, a little conversation going on what is going on with you or your family member and whether this may be a good fit for you. Um, so go ahead and I look forward to speaking with you, sharing a little more, answering the questions that you've jotted down throughout this webinar. Have an excellent evening and I'll speak with you soon.